we've been playing around with partial fractions and using those to solve some integrals. And I just want us to take a step back here. We've been learning a ton of new things on how to do different types of setups. And I want us to focus specifically on setting up partial fractions in this video, because you've seen once we have the setup, we can either use cover up or clear some denominators and set up coefficient equations. And then solving for those variables becomes a little easier. And then we can just throw what we have into an integral and those that integral becomes very easy to solve. So the hard part is in just the setup. If we can set these up right, we can solve for all the variables that we need to. So that's what we're going to work on in this video. I want you to pause the video and try to write out the partial fraction setups for all of these rational expressions. And again, you don't even need to solve for the variables. You can if you want to, but just write out what these setups are. So pause the video and give that a go. All right, assuming that you've given it a go, let's begin with this rational expression in blue here. So this is going to be equal to, and we can look at this numerator. So we can't, we can't factor this to make it any easier to have something cancel. And denominator wise, can we can we factor anything? Can we make it easier? Well, x squared minus nine, that's a difference of squares. So we can rewrite this as x minus three. And then we have x plus three as well. And that looks like to be the only simplification that we can make. Now let's write out our partial fraction setup. So we know how to deal with these linear terms. We have a over x minus three. And then we have plus b over x plus three, okay? And now we have this irreducible quadratic term. And we saw that in a few videos ago. And we saw that we need one degree less in this numerator. So CX plus D over X squared plus three, X squared plus three. And then lastly, we have these repeating linear factors. And we saw we, we could think of these kind of like decimal expansion. So we will then have E over X plus two x plus two, and then we have f over x plus two squared, x plus two squared. So that is the that is the partial fraction setup for this rational expression over here. Now let's move on to this one in green. So in green, what do we have going on? We can factor out a two, but that doesn't help us. It looks like in canceling anything. So we can just leave that numerator alone. And then in this denominator here, again, we have this difference of squares. So this is going to reduce to x minus two times x plus two. And you can see now we have these repeating linear factors and it's not just x plus two cubed, it's x plus two to the fourth power now. So what does that look like? Let's deal with this, uh, this linear term here, a over x minus two. And then we'll talk about the repeating linear terms. Again, think decimal expansion here. We're going to have b over x plus two, and then we have plus c over x plus two squared, and then we have plus d over x plus two cubed. And then finally, we have e, e over x plus two to the fourth power. And that is our partial fraction setup for this rational expression. Now let's move on to this guy in yellow. So in yellow here, what do we have going on? Doesn't look like numerator or denominator can factor at all. So we're going to get working on this. We have a linear factor in this denominator, so we can write that guy out first, a over x plus one, x plus one. And then this might look a little new to us. So this is an irreducible quadratic fraction, quadratic factor that is raised to a power. So we have these repeating irreducible quadratic factors. So it's kind of combining these two other ideas. We've looked at repeating linear factors, and then we've also looked at irreducible quadratic factors. And this is gonna combine both of those ideas. So maybe pause the video and try to wrestle with this a little bit. See if you can get, get the answer for it. So what we're going to have is again, we're gonna combine those two ideas. So when we have an irreducible quadratic factor, we saw this, we have x squared plus four, and then we want one degree less in our numerator. So this is BX plus C. And then again, we're combining this idea. We have repeating irreducible quadratic factors. So now we are also going to have DX plus E over X squared plus four. And then that's raised to the power of two. So this is our, this is our partial fraction setup for this guy here. And again, we just combine those two ideas. And then lastly, let's look at this guy in orange. So in orange, what do we have going on? 
let's see, we have our numerator cannot factor anymore. So we cannot factor that numerator. Denominator looks fully factored. We have uh, two linear terms here, and then we have repeating linear terms, linear factors. So we can just write this out. We have a over x minus two, a over x minus two, and then plus b over x. And then we also have c over x plus two, c over x plus two, and then finally plus d over x plus two squared. That's what we have for this rational expression in orange. And we are done. And real quick, before we go, uh, again, this is, I think, the hardest part of these integrals. When you see uh, taking an indefinite or definite integral of these rational expressions here is just getting the setup for the partial fractions correct. And once you have this, you have those two tools to work through finding all these variables. And then once you have the variables, then you just end up with these easy integrals to evaluate. So I think this is the hardest part. And hopefully this gave you some more practice and made you feel a little more comfortable in setting up partial fractions.